You likely have heard of the iconic geyser that sits at the heart of America's first national park, Yellowstone. Oh, faithful! Oh, faithful! Oh, faithful! Oh, faithful! Oh, faithful! Hold! Faithful! Yeah, that one. But did you know there are more than 10,000 hydrothermal features at Yellowstone? They are all over this park, as long as you know where to find them. Then these are super accessible to visitors right off the road. I'm a boardwalk for easy access, but for intrepid adventurers. Like, like us, y'all. You find some amazing hydrothermal gems hidden away from the crowds where you basically have the whole place to yourself. And of course, we went on an epic backcountry journey into the heart of the Shoshone Geyser Basin when we visited Yellowstone to find these wondrous places. So today, we're gonna to introduce you to this dynamic geological laboratory as we take you along on our adventure to explain the five hydrothermal features that you find at Yellowstone. There's gonna be a lot of education, so grab a snack, make it big, like popcorn, and let's go! Where are we going? I think we're going that way. Okay. Step one in epic adventures, know which direction to walk. I cannot believe I hiked into the back country with you. Also, where did the popcorn come from? What? I'm hungry and I'm gonna need a T-R-E-A-T. There's a lot about Yellowstone that makes this place special, but certainly the hydrothermal features are at the top of that list. So before we take you out on our hike adventure, we want to lay down some hydrothermal basics about how this place works. Hydrothermal equals water plus heat. Heat comes from volcanic activity, the Yellowstone supervolcano. And if you want to learn more about the supervolcano that powers this place, bookmark this video and watch it when you're done here. Please, please, please. Heat alone, not enough. We also need water. Groundwater from the mountains, snowmelt, and rainwater from the sky. And this water percolates through the rock and eventually it meets with the heat generated by the shallow magma that's below. Now the temperature of this heated water can get well above boiling, but the water remains a liquid instead of evaporating because of the incredible pressure that's underground. This results in superheated water with temperatures exceeding 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Superheated water, being lighter than the colder water around it, moves through the cracks and holes in the earth until eventually coming to the surface. This underground plumbing creates the system of hydrothermal features that we see in the park today, and it results in one of five different thermal features depending on the geology of where you are in the park. These five features include hot springs, they're the most common, mud pots, steam vents, also called fumaroles, geysers, and travertine terraces. Ooh, that's a good mouth workout. Travertine terraces, travertine terraces, travertine ter Oh no, I messed it up. <laughs> to see some of these hot water features in action, we hiked into the Shoshone Geyser Basin, a beautiful backcountry area with hundreds of thermal features in 80 geysers. This spot is about 8.5 miles deep into the heart of Yellowstone. So it's definitely a big adventure. Let's go check it out. Let's go. Today we're going to be going on a backcountry hike on Lone Star Trail. We're gonna be the only people there, and one out of a hundred people even go here, so I'm a lucky boy. This adventure leads you through forest, meadow, across and along streams until you eventually reach the beautiful Shoshone Lake, the largest backcountry lake in the lower US. This is a long, good hike. This is going to be shorter tomorrow and the day after that. Just before you reach the lake, you hike right through the geyser basin. The geysers aren't that stinky. These aren't geysers. These are hot springs. Or the Shoshone Geyser Basin. And it's really stinky, so I'm going to probably not talk for the rest of it. It is a little bit stinky, but also amazing. Behind us, we have geysers, we have hot springs, we have incredible geothermal activity. That's all here, and we are pretty much alone in the, one of the world's most significant geyser basins. So it's pretty special to get to visit here and to get to share it with you. Now let's get going, I'm smelling. So that smell comes from the amazing landscape of hot springs and steam vents and geysers, all of which are active here. And you don't have to worry about the smell. We've taken it out for you from the footage. 
so you don't have to smell it. Computers don't have scent releasers. Well, not yet. YouTube probably will make scent releasers. Imagining how some things that I watch on YouTube would smell. <laughs> it's not good. Hot springs are pools of super hot water and are the most common feature at Yellowstone and in the Shoshone Geyser Basin. Behind me are hot springs, these pools of bubbling hot water that are different from geysers because hot springs are more like tubes or straws. There's no constrictions in their plumbing that cause them to fire off like geysers do with pressure and then settle down and then fire off again. Hot springs are open systems where rainwater goes in, gets heated by the magma, convex back up to the surface at super hot temperatures. The water coming out of some of the hot springs can be as hot as 280 degrees Fahrenheit. That's still sticky. Steam vents are also common at Shoshone. Instead of hot water, they release hot steam. Behind me are steam vents here at the Shoshone Geyser Basin, and you can see them kind of steaming away. No water comes out of these steam vents because there's so little water in their plumbing that it all boils off before it reaches the surface. So all you see is the steam coming out the top. It was a long hike and we did not want to rush our time soaking in this amazing place. So we spent the night at a campsite just between the Geyser Basin and the lake. This meant we needed to carry and store our own food and supplies for the journey. This prompted Kai to ponder a critical question that he wants to address with all of you. Before we begin part three, I'm gonna ask you, would you rather have normal M&Ms, peanut M&Ms, caramel M&Ms, peanut butter M&Ms? Which one's your favorite? Say all of them or none of them, that's okay. Comment down below, be cool, do it. But even the best plan adventures sometimes have a few hiccups. And while you can find mud pots at the Shoshone Geyser Basin on our trip, we really didn't see any in the areas that were safe to access, so. Nature doesn't always cooperate with our filming needs. We love adventure, and we also love following the rules and being safe. So instead of going off trail to find some, we went to accessible places to show you and tell you all about them. Mud pots are another fantastic feature in the park, like the fountain paint pots you see behind me, which are an excellent example of mud pots here that you can visit. Mud pots, unlike other features, don't have a direct connection from the surface to the thermal activity below. Instead, they function more like double boilers with the rainwater collecting in the basin that's at the surface and the thermal activity then generating all the heat and pressure and the gases coming up from below. But it's not not necessarily an open connection like you would have in a hot spring or a geyser. Another interesting thing about mud pots is that they change throughout the year based on how much rainwater has fallen. So in the spring they may be more liquidy whereas in the summer to fall when there's less rainwater they get more muddy and gloopy like they are now which is really fun. Mud pots are sometimes called paint pots, and these are the artist paint pots, and they're called that because they can come in a variety of colors. And these colors are due to the minerals that are in the clay. So you can have things like iron oxides that can color the clay red or pink. Sometimes you can get brown, gray, and thus the name, artist paint pots. Before we head back deep into the wilderness of the Shoshone Geyser Basin, there's one more front country feature we need to tell you about. Travertine Terraces. Mammoth Hot Springs in the north of the park is one of the few places in the world where active travertine terraces are found and the only spot to see these beauties at Yellowstone. Hang on, we have an explosive finish to our Shoshone Geyser Basin adventure to show you at the end of today's video. First, to the travertine. We're at the travertine terraces. They're like inside out caves because the water bubbles up, it deposits limestone that it's carrying through it on the surface and creating these travertine terraces that we see. Now, you're probably wondering, why are some of the travertine terraces different colors? Because of some, mom? Thermophiles. Thermophiles mm -hmm. in the water that make them look different colors. Take a look at that beauty. Fun fact with Kai, 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 Fun fact time. Thermophiles are microorganisms that help the travertine grow. They love to live in the extreme hydrothermal environments. And now, to the explosive finish of our last feature, geysers. 
Isn't nature amazing? Isn't it? Geysers are the classic Yellowstone geothermal feature, right? Old Faithful, the iconic geyser that everyone comes to see. This is Minuteman Geyser back in Shoshone Geyser Basin. It's called Minuteman because it goes off pretty much once a minute as it's going off right now. Now, geysers are unique. There's only about a thousand of them worldwide and half of them are here at Yellowstone. So very special place. Geysers are essentially hot springs that have constrictions in their plumbing. So a hot springs are more like tubes or straws. Geysers have sort of tunnels and rooms and tubes and plumbing that goes off and is part of the geyser and is where sort of the pressure builds up over time until it gets to a point where it explodes out the top just like our friend Minuteman does. Hey, Mama. Hi, what's up? I'm good. We're about to head back. Very happy. You like this place? I do. I do too. <sighs> don't want to make it all the way to the Shoshone Lake or Shoshone Geyser Basin. All the way out to here, the North Star, Lone Star is a really good hike, really fun, really nice, and look at her in the back, going boom! Well, we're here at Lone Star Geyser, and Kai's right, it is a pretty easy hike. It's about 2.5 miles on what was an old road, so it's just a gravel flat surface. It's open to mountain bikers and cross-country skiers in the winter. And you come out here and you get your own private geyser experience without the boardwalks and the crowds, without having to walk uh, or hike all the way to the Shoshone Geyser Basin. And it's pretty awesome because while the main eruption happens every three hours, there are minor eruptions that occur and lots of geyser activity. So if you come out here, even if you don't see a major eruption, you're gonna see some geyser action going on when you visit. This is like watching a baseball game. Get me some peanuts and crack your deck. We made it! Yeah! How's it feel to be done your adventure? Good. Really good. What was it like? Good. Good. Really good. You ready for ice cream? Yes! All right. We had a blast enjoying our hike through Yellowstone's hidden hydrothermal world. And that ice cream, oh yeah, that ice cream was pretty good too. And I was really hungry after that hike. But if you think the Shoshone Geyser Basin only has amazing thermal features, well, wait till you see what else we found there. Ow! Ow!